At Thrifty AV, I've tested out several easy cap style USB video capture devices, and none of these have impressed me very much, but I think things are going to change with the UCEC video capture all in one, and this says Pro version. This is a new version. I'm going to unbox it and test it out. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. First things first is a quick disclaimer. I reached out to UCEC and requested this device as a review sample and they were kind enough to send it. Now, if they want this device back, they can ask for it. I am not being paid for this review and all opinions in this video are my own. This is inside of the box. I gotta get it out of this box before I can test it. Before I get into this box, let's take a look at the outside of the box. UCEC brand video capture all-in-one analog to digital video transfer solution. They say what it's good for. It's the pro version, digitally transfer analog video, Mac and PC compatible, social networks. Maybe this will upload directly to social networks and video editing software, Windows, Mac OS software included. Here's the barcode, made in China. System requirements, Windows 7, 8, 10, P4 CPU or above, 512 megabytes RAM. Graphics card supports DirectX 9 or above, Mac OS 10. With Mac, it's Mac OS 10, 10.10 or later, G4 Mac or above. And the package is sealed here. Here's the unit itself. That's the USB side and that's the capture side. It does come with uh, RCA AV extension cable booklet and it's all in English. That's a good thing. Okay, two blank disks. There's some software on disk here. I bet this comes with both a driver and capture software. I'll also check this out with other capture software. Now the folks at UCEC said that I should install the software before I plug in the device, but I don't have a disk drive hooked up to this right now, so I'm just gonna plug the device in and see what happens. Okay, setting up a device. Okay, now it says the device is ready. So I'm going to try it without installing the software and uh, I'll try it with the Windows camera app and see what happens. Without installing the Windows drivers from the disk, the camera app did not detect this device. Let's try OBS Studios. And OBS Studio again was unable to detect it. Over the past two years, I've used this TestBench PC for all sorts of weird software and hardware tests. I figure I'm overdue for a reset, so I'm gonna do that before I install the software. If you do not have an optical drive on your computer, there are links for the software and drivers on the booklet. I'll include those links in the description. I've hooked a disk drive up to my computer. I'm going to do a fresh install of the driver software. And it's going to be called the EMPIA Technology Sound. I want to pay attention to that because I'm going to look for it later in Device Manager. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and install the application that came with this. The software is going to be called Honest Tech VHS to DVD 5.0 and then click install to begin and it's in the process of installing. It was bundled with Adobe Reader. Adobe's not my favorite PDF reader but I don't have any PDF reader installed right now so I'm going to go ahead and allow it. However, I am not going to let it bother me with updates constantly. Here's something you don't see on Windows 10 all the time. It wants to reboot after the installation. The product key is printed on the CD envelope. All right, and Honest Tech VHS to DVD has launched. Capture format set to DVD file, but I'm gonna do an MPEG-2 instead. Quality is at best, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, TV video standard, in the US you want NTSC, recording resolution. Right now it's set to 720 by 480. 
and the video device is the UCEC and the audio device is set to line UCEC USB audio. I'm going to leave it there. All right, I popped in the VHS tape National Geographic Video Lost Kingdom of the Maya. Right now I'm using the composite video input. The UCEC software has this little camera icon here. So you can click on it and grab a still frame from your video feed and it saves as a JPEG. Now if I record video, uh, this will still work. Right now I am recording a video file and I can still click on this little camera icon and it grabbed a little picture. The UCEC video capture device itself, this is a little button and when I click that button, that also acts as a trigger to capture a JPEG picture. This is the signal I'm getting. I have all the settings set to default. And I'm doing a, just a short little test recording here to see what this is gonna look like. While Paris was still a village, they were carving cities out of the jungle. Yes, that video was a little bit soft and a little bit grainy, but this is an old VHS tape. So what you're capturing can't look better than what your source is. So I'm gonna switch sources now. I have a DVD uh, with color bars, I have a DVD with test signals, and I have a CD with some audio test signals. And this is an S-Video cable, so things should look better when I hook up through S-Video. Let's start with the color bars and see how true they are. On the software, to switch to S-Video, hit these little gears right here. Now on video device, hit settings and switch to S-Video and now I am seeing color bars. I've loaded up the color bars into DaVinci Resolve. Right now we're looking at the source color bars. The max white is at 1023 where it belongs. The black's at zero. All the levels are good. All the chroma is landing in the right spots. Now let's look at the capture. Okay, these are a little bit all over the place. Black level looks pretty good, but uh, it looks like it's a little bit too hot. I think this max white is well above 1023. Uh, this right here that's supposed to max out at 768 is a little bit too hot. All the chroma except for yellow looks pretty good. Now keep in mind that I had the software set to default and default might not be exactly perfect. It looks like I'm going to have to back the peak levels off a little bit. Obviously the levels on the default setting weren't quite perfect for my Magnavox player here. So I've grabbed the Sound and Vision DVD and I'm using the contrast tool. This is a frame grab from this DVD and I'm setting the brightness and contrast on my capture device to match up as closely as I can the frame grab from the DVD. Now right now I think my black level is a little too hot so I'm going to bring the contrast down. I'm going to try this out. Brightness is at 110, contrast is at 21. And here they are side by side, the source contrast test on the left and the captured video with brightness set to 110, contrast set to 21. Okay, next is a sharpness test on the top is a rip of the source video on the bottom is the capture. You will notice that there is some blurring as the little lines get closer and closer on the capture, but that is to be expected. I've used a bunch of capture devices and the capture is never quite as sharp on a capture as it is on the source video. This is actually pretty good as far as sharpness goes. I have three other EasyCap style capture devices here and all three of them have left and right audio inputs, but none of these are true stereo. They're all mono. They mix down the left and right inputs. So I'm really curious to see if the UCEC Pro version is true stereo with its left and right audio inputs. The next thing I want to check using the Sound & Vision Home Theater tune-up is the stereo separation. I'm going to be using the 5.1 channel speaker test, uh, concentrating on the left front, center, right front. 
So I should hear good stereo separation from the left front and the right front and a nice mix in the center when I do this test. Left front, center front, right front, left front, center front, right front. Next I want to do a frequency sweep from the NAB test CD. On the original CD track, the entire waveform of the frequency sweep has a uniform amplitude, but as you see, the deep, deep bass is definitely tapered off, and then it gains amplitude as it approaches the mid frequencies, and the mid frequencies do just fine. Interference starts to happen in the mid highs and continues to get weirder and worse as you go higher in frequency. Take a listen. A lot of old commercial VHS tapes like Back to the Future have macro vision copy protection. That really messes up tape to tape dubs. It'll even mess up tape to DVD recorder dubs. I want to see if Back to the Future will mess with the UCEC capture device. I'm only going to show a few seconds of this. I don't want a copyright strike. I recorded quite a bit more footage than that just to make sure nothing went wrong. I didn't see any drop frames. The video level was rock solid even though Macrovision messes with auto gain control. I didn't see any indication of that in the captured footage. Now I've switched programs. Now I am using OBS Studio back here to capture and since I've installed the correct drivers it is working just fine. However, the Windows camera app I could never get it to work with the UCEC capture device so don't try to use that software to capture video from this device. I first heard about the UCEC Capture Device Pro version from the channel PE for Doers. Uh, here is his video about the same thing. Now David does some tests that I don't do, some different tests, so if you want to check that out, go to the PE for Doers YouTube channel, link in the description. So in conclusion, the UCEC Pro version video capture device is a quality EasyCap style capture device. It has good video levels after I made some adjustments. There were no noticeable drop frames. It has stereo audio and that is a big deal. A bunch of the EasyCap style devices, they might have a right and a left input, but they are feeding it into the uh, computer as a mono signal, not true stereo. Uh, I do have a few concerns. Windows tried to install some drivers. They were the incorrect drivers. You have to install the correct drivers manually and they come on a disc. Now you can go to their website and access those same drivers, but that takes a little bit of work. Uh, the default video levels using the software that came with it were a little bit off. I had to make some adjustments in order to get the video levels just right. Uh, other than that, everything worked great. If you are interested in this product, there is an affiliate link in the description. Thrifty AV earns a small commission at no additional cost to the consumer. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel and thank you UCEC for sending this device over. Stay thrifty everyone. <laughs>